Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're working on a little project for the Georgia Museum of Agriculture with their steam engine restoration project that we've been helping out with for quite some time. Uh, there's a little plate that needs to go up underneath the front axle on uh, this thing to really get it like it needs to be. Uh, originally, it would have been a casting that was up underneath there. That particular casting was lost many years ago may not have ever even had it at the museum uh, for all I know but uh, we've got some pictures kind of know what it looks like um, I considered making a pattern having a casting done but because of time constraints we're just going to fabricate it out of some steel uh, and it's a pretty simple little little piece and I kind of give you an idea of what it looks like here in just a second and uh, today's project that's what we're going to be working on let's get at it it's a pretty straightforward piece here um, what we've got is there's on the front axle on this there's a pin that goes all the way through uh, up into the front column uh, there's an axle that kind of fits in this slot uh, which is what is it it's three inches square and the wheels are mounted out here on either end of this extended out on top of that there's kind of a wooden piece that we made and uh, there's above this on the very top that where the pin goes through there's a casting that allows that pin to go through there's a couple of bolts that go through it and then on the bottom there was another casting that looks something like this uh, that that pin came through there's actually four holes in these that the it sandwiches all together and this kind of holds that axle in place now again originally this would have been made out of cast iron we're going to be making it out of steel just because we need to get the project done uh, and that's what we're we'll working on today uh, I've got my material here to do it with we're going to go ahead and fabricate this up uh, basically need was an inch and a quarter hole in the center for that pin to drop through this is a three inches I think it's about two inches high here um, Anyway, I've got everything we need to get it going. And uh, again, that's our game plan. Now the four holes that will be drilled through here, the three quarter inch holes that some long bolts go through. I don't know exactly where those will be placed. We're gonna have to make the part and then go out there and transfer those holes. So we know exactly where to drill those. I'm not gonna be doing that in today's video. We're just gonna go ahead and getting it made. Uh, we'll have to go out there and figure out the placements of the holes and uh, come back to the shop, drill those in to fi really finish it up. There's also a um, kind of an eye bolt piece that kind of mounts to the front of this. I don't have it on the drawing that uh, a rod goes in to kind of gives it some stability. We'll add that in as well. So anyway, rough idea of what it looks like. I've got some dimensions on another piece of paper and uh, we're going to get at it. Material we're going to be using here. I've got a piece of plate. This is uh, six inches wide uh, 14 inches long and I think it's a quarter of an inch thick uh, That's going to be the base. Uh, we need to drill a hole in there for that to go down into and we've got this piece of stock up here Which is inch and a half by two inches and we're going to be cutting two pieces and those will be kind of mount, mounting on here like such on either side we'll leave a three inch trough in the center in the very middle we're going to have to kind of cut us out a little bit of clearance because on that axle it was made by a blacksmith they punched a hole through there and it kind of flares out a little bit in the very center so uh, i got some measurements on that we're going to have to clear that out I'm not sure we may have to do some machining to this part to get it um, to the right sizes i got to do some figuring on that uh, but we'll get all that figured out here in just a minute let's go ahead and uh, lay out our hole in the plate and that's going to be our first uh, operation to get that inch and a quarter hole drilled in there start by locating the center of this piece and do that we're just going to use the diagonals I just got a two foot straight edge rule here and we'll just lay this out like such that should be the very center uh, we'll go ahead and go over to the radial drill now we put a center punch in there and then we'll go drill that out All right, we are over here at the radial drill and we get lined up here to drill that hole, which is about right there. We'll uh, bring our drill bit down, engage our feed and let it drill right through there. This is just a pilot hole to get it started. 
And now we'll go up to a larger drill bit. Let's go ahead and take this drill bit out. And we're also gonna remove this chuck. I'm gonna take the whole head up. Drop that down about right there and knock this chuck out. This is just a number five Morse taper. And we're gonna come in here with a big uh, taper shank drill. Let's bring that back down. This is just uh, one size over an inch and a quarter. I'm going to slow the RPMs down a little bit. Let's see, inch and a quarter. It recommends 244 RPMs. And let's see, we got a 200. Right there. That's what we'll drill it with. And should be still lying right back up on it. We'll engage and let her drill out. There we go. Just deburr this hole. We'll just use this little hand deburring tool. That feels good. That feels good. All right. Step one done. I've cut my bar here to the different lengths we need. And let's just do a mock up here. That one's gonna be welded onto the back. And this one's gonna be welded on the front. And what we need is a three inch gap down the center and this needs to be two inches high, which is the nominal size of the stock. So we should be good there. I'll just take a rule here and check this out. And looks like we're right on the, the money. So when I weld this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some spacers in here to make sure that I've got a good three inch clearance in there. But uh, I think we're good. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this uh, over to the grinder and we'll do some weld prep. We'll cut some bevels around the bottom. I'd also wanna just uh, hit the ends of this. Uh, I got some sharp burrs on here from where we sawed that. Uh, get that cleaned up. And I think we'll be ready to set up for welding this. All right, let's get this thing ready to weld. So we'll put the piece on the back here and more or less just make it flush with the edges. Now to put my spacer in there, I've got this set of uh, shims from Fireball Tools. I've shown this before, but these are some really nice little blocks. They have magnets in them. These are great for doing setups like this. Um, they're a, a known size. In this case, this is a two inch block. So I'm gonna put one there and I'll put one here. And I need a three inch gap. This is a one inch block. Uh, we'll put it in here. That should give me exactly three inches between there. But I want to have a little bit of extra wiggle room. So I'm going to put a 20 thousandths shim. This is just some shim stock that I have back here. We'll put that in there as well. And that'll make give me just a little bit of clearance in here uh, for some wiggle room uh, so that this will hopefully just fit right over. And I'm gonna do now is probably get a clamp and uh, clamp those across and then come in here and we'll tack them in and weld them in place. I think we're ready to tack it in place. I'm just gonna use my MIG welder here to do this. And we'll go ahead and tack it in.
right, that ought to hold it in place. Go ahead and pull my shims out. And I can go ahead and weld her in there. So now things get interesting. Um, I mentioned this earlier on, but the axle goes in here, but like I said in the beginning, they had punched the hole through the axle with, in the blacksmith setup, they punched it, so it kind of has a swelled out radius right in the center. And this needs to be about three and a quarter inches in diameter, maybe just a little bit over that to make sure we have clearance. So uh, to do that, what we're gonna do is use a boring head over here on the milling machine and just bore down through there and cut it out. I think I've got my mill set up here uh, for automatic down feed. I got it where it automatically shut off right before it gets to the bottom. I think we are ready to go. So let's uh, engage our head. This is automatically feeding down. And uh, let's see if we can get this done. Should start making contact here in just a second. There it goes. Just barely touching each side. And we'll let it go all the way down to the bottom. We'll just continue uh, increasing that radius until we get our measurement that we're after. Again, about three and a quarter inches in diameter. Uh, I'll probably go a little bit over that just to make sure we got plenty of clearance. And we're getting close to the bottom here. I should have it where it automatically kicks out of gear right before we touch the bottom. There, perfect. All right, we will stop the head now and we're gonna crank that out. Make our radius a little bit more. I'm gonna do about a half a turn on this thing and away we go again. We do have an interrupted cut here, which is the reason it kind of has that knocking sound in there. But uh, it'll be fine.
tighten up my gib screws just a little bit more here. It's acting like it's wanting to get a little bit larger on the diameter as it goes down, probably that beating factor of it, uh, that interrupted cut. All right, let's uh, do that again. to get a rough idea of what the radius is or diameter is here and actually we're right on three inch 250 thousandths I am going to take one more pass this is not a precision fit this is just for clearance so uh, we'll take one more pass in there and that should give us plenty of room for that to clear so one more pass and we're done about right there That should do it. All right, we're back over on the radial drill now. I need to drill and tap a 5 8 11 hole right here in the front of this. And uh, we got in a 17 30 seconds drill bit, which is the tap size. And uh, let's uh, see if we can get this one done. Can just uh, engage our down feed and let her go. Easy peasy. Got a tap in there. We've got our speed slowed down to the slowest speed. And I'm not gonna automatic down feed. We'll just get it engaged and just kind of let it pull itself down through there. There it goes. And I think we're through, so now we will reverse our way out. Very good. Final step here, we're gonna put our uh, eye bolt in the front. This will just screw in, but I'm gonna weld it in place. This is gonna be a permanent installation. I need for it to be straight up and down right there. And uh, obviously with my threads where it bottoms out, it's probably not gonna be oriented in any particular way, but we got a nice gap in there to weld. So um, let's just go ahead and weld that in place. And between the weld and the screws, it should hold in place just fine. Let me get suited up here and we'll uh, weld that up. All right, here we go, I'm gonna tack it. Make sure it's where I want it. And now we'll weld it in place. hold it 
and there we go. I think we have this piece uh, fabricated on up and ready to go install. Well, kind of install. I still got to drill the four three quarter inch holes that go all the way through these blocks. But until we put it on and we can transfer those holes in, I don't know exactly where they need to be. So we will probably do that off camera. It'll just be simply using some transfer punches and uh, drilling some holes probably over there on the uh, on the radio drill. Uh, but once that is done, uh, this will be ready. I'm going to probably go ahead and put a coat of paint on it and we'll get it out to the museum later this week and get her finished up. Well, there we go. Uh, one more project knocked out here. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little bit of a combination between fabricating and machining. Uh, a little bit of everything in there. Um, machining is more my forte than fabricating. Uh, but we got it done uh, and I'm happy with the results. I think this is gonna work out just fine. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna call this a success. Uh, once we get those four holes in there, we'll be that much closer to having our steam engine out there at the museum ready to go. This is actually, again, goes on the front axle of that portable steam engine that kind of helps hold it all together. And um, yeah, this will make it a lot better. And uh, while the original was a casting and we could have made a pattern, set it off and had it cast, but in the essence of time, we just need to get this one knocked out. So fabricate it is what we did. Guys, uh, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there so that you get those uh, notifications when new videos are posted to the site. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.